xin kính mời cộng đoàn chúng ta cùng đứng để chào đón mẹ La Vang. Xin mời đội chống chúng ta bắt đầu nổi chống để tung hô mẹ La Vang.
Lạy Chúa, Chúa đã ban cho chúng con người mẹ tuyệt vời là Đức Trinh Nữ Maria. Nhờ lời chuyển cầu của mẹ và lòng nhân hậu của Chúa, xin cho chúng con được tràn đầy ân sủng của Chúa, biết hết lòng yêu mến và noi gương mẹ để đời sống chúng con ngày một hoàn thiện hơn. Chúng con cầu xin nhờ Đức Giêsu Kitô Chúa chúng con. Xin cộng đoàn mở trang 38 để đọc kinh thánh mẫu là vậy. Lạy mẹ Maria, thấy màu la la đầy muôn ơn người cho Chúa trời đã đoái thương tròn mẹ tinh tuyển thanh tiên sinh đấng cứu độ muôn loài mẹ đã chọn la vang mà hiền đến cứu giúp khổ phụ tổ tiên lương con lương cao giữa thời ly loạn cấm cách khôn khôn khổ trăm bề từ ấy gót chân mẹ bước đến vẫn mãi đầy ơn thiên ơn phần hồn ơn phần xa người vẫn tận đến kẻ thu phiền nào ai cầu khấn mà mẹ không nhầm lời lạy mẹ Maria thanh màu ra vang mẹ là thanh màu chúa trời cũng là thanh máu loài người chúng con cùi xin xuống phước hai hà đoài thương con cái thiết tha ban này xin cho chúng con tâm lòng từ bi nhân hậu đại lượng bao dung cùng nhau bồi đắp nền văn minh tình thương và sự sống xin mẹ phù hộ chúng con luôn sống đức hạnh đầy lòng cây trông và sau cuộc đời này xin cho chúng con được về sống bên mẹ hưởng vinh phúc trong chúa ta ngôi muôn đời và giờ đây chúng con xin kính mời quý cha quý tu sĩ và cộng đoàn an toàn xin mời đoàn phụng vũ dân hoa kính mẹ
kính mời đức cha quý cha đồng tế quý thầy phó tế và cộng đoàn an tọa con xin được giới thiệu đức cha và quý cha đồng tế chủ tế và giảng thuyết đức cha his excellency edward da kuna society of divine word bishop of far river diocese thông dịch bài giảng của đức cha cha anton bùi kim phong kính mời cha charles phạm đức sinh trưởng ban tổ chức có lời chào mừng đức cha và cộng đoàn à, quý vị có biết không hôm nay là đầu tiên tôi tham dự là đại hội đường kiểu rất là đẹp rồi các anh chị các em vẫn đồ so beautiful and everything perfect một cái là tôi biết chắc một điều là đức mẹ rất là vui mừng trọng kính đức cha quý cha quý thầy sáu các anh chị các anh chúng sinh tu sĩ nam nữ cùng toàn thể đoàn con cái đông đảo từ khắp nơi về đây mừng đức mẹ la vàng lần thứ 39 năm 2019 này con xin đại diện quý cha thuộc 14 giáo xứ cộng đoàn công giáo Việt Nam Đông Bắc Hoa Kỳ xin được welcome chào đón quý cha quý tu sĩ nam nữ cùng toàn thể quý ông bà chị em lời chào thân ái nhất Your Ex Excellency Edgar Modella, Bishop of the Four River Diocese, welcome home. Reverend Ted Brown, Director of National Shy of La Salette, priests, deacons, seminarians, brothers and sisters, and all humans attending this 39th Eucharist at the National Shy of La Salette today. On behalf of the priests of the 14 Vietnamese Catholic communities of New England, we would like to expect our warmest welcome to all of you. Kính thưa quý cộng đoàn hành hương, chủ đề hành hương Đức Mẹ La Vang năm nay, Mẹ Maria mẫu gương tuyệt hảo ở trong Matthew đoạn. 4 câu 40, đoạn 5 câu 48 và trong tông huấn đời sống thánh hiến số 28 mẹ là mẹ toàn thể loài người vì mẹ sinh ra chú Kitô là đầu mà mọi tin hữu là chi thể của nhiệm thể chú Kitô nên giáo hội gọi mẹ là mẹ rất thánh của Chúa và của loài người mẹ riêng của mỗi người chúng ta Dear Pilgrims This year the theme for the pilgrimage of Our Lady of La Vang, Mary, the first and most perfect disciple of Jesus, taken from Matthew 5, 48. And also in Vista Conquesta, number 28, Mary, the one who formed the moment of her immaculate conception, most perfectly reflects the divine beauty. All beautiful is the title which the church people serve. The relationship with Mary most holy which for every believer stem for her, or her union with Christ, is even more pronounced in the life of consecrated persons. Mary's presence in the fundamental influence both the spiritual life of each consecrated person and for the solemnity unity and progress of the whole community. Again, we are happy to welcome bishops, priests, deacons, brothers and sisters, all humans. And in a few announcements with bishops, we are celebrating the pontifical mass in honor Our Lady of Lava, who is the first and the most perfect disciple of Jesus. Kính mời cha Ted Brown, giám đốc trung tâm La Salette, 
có lời phát biểu. I would like to introduce Father Ted Brown, Director of La Salette Shrine, to have a few words. What a joy to see you all here. I didn't have a chance to welcome you on Friday, but I welcome you all now to this place of pilgrimage. And you bless us and continue to make this place holy with your presence. Pilgrimages are to encourage our faith, to dwell, the memory to dwell inside of us, to encourage us as we go along. And we are so happy that for 39 years you have chosen this place for your pilgrimage, for your meeting place with God, for your inspiration for Mary. On Friday at the uh, 11 a.m. Mass, after Mass, I was sitting in the Welcome Center and the young man that was the cross bearer came in and I was talking to him for a minute and he said, uh, Father, the cross is heavy. And I said, yes, crosses are heavy. I don't think he understood what I meant. <laughs> and then I said a little prayer for him. The prayer I have for you all today. Well, I said to him, yes, but you carry it. And this is the prayer I said for him. I hope when you are greeted with the crosses that life gives you, you have the same strength to carry that cross. I pray that for each and every single one of you, that Mary is our model who had to watch her son walk to the cross, was also strengthened to carry the cross that life handed her. Hope that today will be a warm and good memory in your heart as you came here for pilgrimage. All of us here at La Salette live in this day as we remember the goodness. And so thank you for being with us. Thank you for inspiring us. And may God bless you always. Giờ đây xin mời cộng đoàn đứng, chúng ta tiếp tục thăm lễ. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And your spirit. Sing chào. <laughs> And that's so I know how to say Vietnamese. <laughs> but I want to say how happy I am to be with all of you here on this beautiful day, on this beautiful place, on this beautiful occasion of your annual pilgrimage to the shrine in honor of the Blessed Mother. And I'm happy to welcome all of you to the Diocese of Fall River, those who have come from other places of New England, other states, or other dioceses. I hope you feel at home here at La Salette, because I know the La Salette fathers always make the pilgrims at, feel at home. And so tonight, we rejoice and give thanks for your faith, for your perseverance, and for your celebration in honor of the Blessed Mother. So now, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for his forgiveness and his peace.
Chúa ở cùng anh chị em. Và cùng thầy. Tin mừng Chúa Giêsu Kitô theo Thánh Luca. Lần kia, Chúa Giêsu cầu nguyện ở một nơi nọ. Khi người cầu nguyện xong, có một môn đệ thương người rằng: "Lạy thầy, xin dạy chúng con cầu nguyện như do anh đã dạy môn đệ ông." Người nói với ông: "Khi các con cầu nguyện, hãy nói: Lạy cha, nguyện thân cha cả sáng, nước cha chỉ đến. Xin cha cho chúng con hôm nay lương thực hàng ngày và tha nợ chúng con." Như chúng con cũng tha mọi kẻ có nợ chúng con Xin Chúa để chúng con so chiếc tham dỗ Người phán cùng các ông rằng Nếu ai trong các con có người bạn Giữa đêm khuya nói với người ấy rằng Anh ơi xin cho tôi bay ba chiếc bánh Vì tôi có anh bạn đi đường ghé lại nhà tôi Mà tôi không có gì cái đại anh ấy Và từ trong nhà có người ấy đáp Xin đừng quấy đầy tôi Vì cửa đã đóng các con tôi và tôi đã lên giường nằm rồi Tôi không thể thối dậy lấy bánh cho anh được Và nếu người bạn đó vẫn gõ cửa mãi Thầy bảo các con Dù người đó không dậy về tình bạn để lấy bánh cho người bạn Người đó cũng sẽ dậy Vì ít nữa là vì sự cuối đầy của người kia Mà cho anh ta tất cả những gì anh ta cần Và thầy bảo các con các con hãy xin thì sẽ được Hãy tìm thì sẽ gặp Hãy có thì sẽ mở cho Vì hãy ai xin thì sẽ được Ai tìm thì sẽ gặp Ai có thì sẽ mở cho Người cha nào chắc các con Có đứa con xin bánh Mà lại cho nó hoàn đá ư Thầy nó xin con cá Lại cho nó con tấm Thay vì cá sao Thầy nó xin quả trứng Lại cho nó con bọt cặp ư Vậy, nếu các con và những người đàn ác còn biết cho con cái mình những của tốt, Phương chỉ cha các con trên trời sẽ ban thánh thần cho những kẻ sinh người. Đó là lời Chúa. Thầy Chúa Kỳ Tô, Ngài Khen Chúa. I hope all of you here this afternoon can say it is good to be here. Just like the disciples told Jesus when they went to Mount Tabor, Lord, it is good to be here. It is good to be together. It is good to celebrate our faith, to celebrate our cultural traditions, to pass on to the next generation the values and the beauty of our faith, the beauty of our tradition, the beauty of our rituals and our celebrations. Even though I wish I could speak some Vietnamese to communicate better with you, but I still am so happy to be here to preside this celebration with you. And our common language is our faith in the same Lord Jesus Christ. The liturgy for this Sunday reminds us of the importance of prayer in the life of every Christian. Jesus was often found in prayer, in communion with the Father. He also told his disciples to pray constantly, to pray without ceasing, and to pray with faith. In the Gospel today, Jesus taught his disciples and us this most beautiful and most common prayer that is recited throughout the whole world, millions of times, every day, in every language. 
the prayer we have all known and recited our whole life, the Our Father. As we gather here today to honor the Blessed Virgin Mary with the theme, Mary the first and most perfect disciple, we recognize that she is the greatest example of faith, the greatest example of trust in God and readiness to do God's will. But all this can only be done with prayer. Mary is also the example of someone whose life was so united with God that she was able to do all God asked of her. And that can only come with a life of profound union with God that derives from a life of daily prayers. In this troubled world we live in, we need prayer more than ever. Why do we need prayer? Because prayer changes people. Prayer increases our faith and prayer increases God's grace in us. The disciples ask Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. We often hear from people who tell us, please pray for me. We all know how important prayer is. And when we pray for one another, we receive that gift that only prayer can bring. In the Our Father, this informal prayer that we all know so well, Jesus seems to teach his disciples not to rely on formal prayers only, but to pray simply familiarly and from the heart. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that we can find five different forms of prayer. Prayer of blessing and adoration, prayer of petition, prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of praise and prayer of intercession. Our life of prayer should include all these forms of prayer because when we turn to prayer, we turn in adoration to God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit who created us, saved us and continues sanctifying us. But we can also present to God our needs and ask for His guidance and help and protection and grace. We should recognize and humbly ask for personal intentions that we need. As Jesus said in the Gospel, for everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. But we need also to realize that when we pray, we give thanks for the blessings we receive each day. I am sure that everyone here has many reasons to feel blessed and to give thanks. We cannot forget our blessings, an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving makes us happier people. Probably one of the things most common to our prayers is to ask for something. But our prayers should not only be about asking. We cannot forget 
all the other dimensions of prayers. We must also remember that when we pray, we need to place our needs and intentions before God because God's ways is not our ways. God's response may not be what we expected or the way we expected it. So we must persevere and let God decide and respond as He sees fit. An attitude of prayer as Jesus showed His disciples again and again is an attitude of trust in God, dependence on God, and putting everything in His hands. We work as if everything depended on us, and we pray as if everything depended on God. Because ultimately, it does depend on God. We don't have all the answers, and we, we don't have all under control, so we need to pray and leave it in God's hands. From the acknowledgement of the all-powerful and holy God flows our awareness of how small and needy and weak and dependent we are. So when we pray, Lord, give us our daily bread, we are saying, Lord, we cannot do it alone. We need your help. When we pray, Lord, forgive us our sins, we acknowledge that we are sinful people, that none of us is a saint yet, that none of us is perfect. When we ask, subject us not to the trial, we recognize that we are weak and that we can fall and that we can sin and make mistakes. When we ask, even repeatedly, we are not demanding an exercising power of God for us. We are humbly submitting ourselves to God's will. But we also need to remember that when we pray, we need to realize that our prayers is not to change God or His mind or His plan. Rather, when we pray, we pray to change ourselves. If we pray and no change occurs in our life and nothing happens, no change happens, then we haven't really prayed. Prayer changes the one who prays, not God. Prayer becomes difficult when we forget who God is and when we cease to be ourselves before God. In prayer, asking is a way of changing ourselves, of preparing ourselves to receive what we truly need not necessarily what we want. To the unbeliever, prayer seems an exercise in futility. But to us, who believe, prayer is the most powerful and the most reliable force in the world today. The most important element in prayer may be the act of praying itself. Just being there with God 
and spend time with Him. Prayer acknowledges our dependence on God. It acknowledges God's power and majesty and our own inadequacy and need. How do we pray? How do we talk to God? Do we simply read something in His presence or mentally recite something you have learned? Do we simply repeat what somebody else wrote? Or do we place our whole being, our needs, our joys, our sorrows, our gratitude, our begging, our tears, our crying? Do we pray with our every being, with our every ounce of our body and mind and soul? Prayer is at once speaking and listening, a being and a doing, a singing and a dancing. When I walked in here, as soon as I arrived, I saw the young ladies performing that beautiful prayerful dance. That is a prayer. What a beautiful prayer. What a beautiful way of praying, lifting our movements, our voices, our gestures, our whole being. And I could tell how focused and concentrated was everyone. That's what our liturgy is, a moment of lifting up our hearts to God. As Saint Therese once said, prayer is a surge of the heart. Just lift our hearts to God. Sometimes we don't have to say anything. We just need to be there with Him and spend time with Him. Prayer is asking and telling, rejoicing and lamenting, giving thanks for graces received and begging for help. Prayer is words and silence, is crying and laughter, silence and groans. Today, my friends, let us ask Mary, our Blessed Mother, to help us pray as Jesus taught all of us, to help us imitate her example and become people who pray constantly who prays faithfully and who surrender our lives to God as Mary did. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me as you say, as you want, as you desire, not as, not I, want. as I wish, not as I desire, but as you wish, O oh Lord, that's Mary's attitude. That we may surrender our lives dependent and faithfully to God just as she did. Let us ask her to help us become disciples of Jesus as she did and help us to bring Jesus into the world just as she did. God bless all of you.
tổ chức thành thật xin lỗi cùng quý vị nếu có điều chi thiếu sót. Last but not less, we look forward to seeing you all again for our 40 humorous year of 2020. Thank you so much. See you again soon and very soon. And Bishop, right now, our Vietnamese, small Vietnamese group here, really two of you appreciate your time and your talents and your harmony. We have a little gift for you, please. Cảm ơn tất cả cộng đoàn dân chúa đã đến tham dự hai ngày đại hội và hẹn lại tại đại hội thánh mẫu La Vang lần thứ 40 ngày 24 và 25 tháng 7 năm 2020 cũng tại trung tâm La Salette. Xin quý cộng đoàn và quý anh chị thiện nguyện vui lòng giúp ban tổ chức dọn dẹp vệ sinh chung quanh khu vực mình đang đứng nơi lễ đài xin cảm ơn. As we come to the conclusion of this celebration here this evening, I want to let you know how inspired I am from all that you did and represented here. I'm so inspired by your faith and your prayerfulness and your devotion and your dedication to the community and to the family. I was inspired to see how many young people are present here today and how you involve the whole community, the young and the old and everyone in between. And for the beautiful choir, what a beautiful music you inspire a lot of you. And I wish I could speak some Vietnamese. You have to teach me how to speak Vietnamese. Uh, my community, the Society of Divine Vocation, just opened a mission in the Vietnam last year. I expect that they will invite me to ordain some of the future priests in Vietnam. But somebody has going to have to teach me Vietnamese. So I hope somebody, I'll find somebody here in, in uh, Massachusetts to do that. Again, God bless all of you for all that you do to keep the faith alive. God bless you as you go back to your homes and we look forward to seeing you again the next time. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon all of you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.